watching Let's Chat. Bothwell out in front, 61-61 tie. Bothwell drives all the way in his layup is good. With 4.3 seconds left, David Jean Baptiste drives, goes up three pointer on the way. God, he hit it. David Jean Baptiste three at the buzzer. Bucks win it. Could you tell Jim Reynolds was excited as he made that last call of the game? And Jim mm -hmm. was excited. UTC fans were excited. And we are excited to have Jim Reynolds here this morning <laughs> joining us. JR, good morning. You've done over 1,300 UTC basketball games in your tenure with the Mox. I got to ask you, where does that <laughs> one fall on your all-time favorites list? Uh, it would be high up there. I'll, I'll say that. The Sweet 16 run, Mox got a last-second shot to win that tournament title as well. So. Those two are high up on the list. I'm not sure where they fall exactly, but they're up there. Before we get into some of the nuts and bolts of this, I wanted to ask you, what happened? What was going through your mind when the game wound up tied with, what, four seconds or something to go? What was going through your mind at that point? I don't know at that point. Like most of the time, there wasn't a lot going through my mind, <laughs> even, in the, even when the thought process is going on. So you're just kind of caught up in the moment. And, and again, when there's not timeouts, you don't have a t time to reset in your brain. Right. So UTC's down three. A.J. Caldwell makes a three, ties the game. Then Mike Bothwell, really good player for Furman, comes down and makes that layup. Furman goes up by two. UTC could have called a timeout. In fact, I joke with Lamont Paris who said he was going to let it go. He was going to let him just play. And then he saw David Jean Baptiste kind of peel off, and then he wanted a timeout trying to call a timeout, and the officials didn't see him. So I said, you know what, it's a good thing you didn't call a timeout because you would have messed it up. And then, of course, David hits the shot. David Jean Baptiste, arguably for a while the most popular man in Tennessee <laughs> athletics anywhere. I mean, from Mountain City to Memphis. This guy is just a stud out on the court. What's he like as a person? Uh, David's a lot of fun now. Um, people talk about him all the time. He always he has that infectious smile. They call him the mayor. Because yeah. he knows everyone. He's been here six years. He's been here longer than Coach Paris has been here. <laughs> so think about that. This is Coach Paris's fifth year. This is Lamont's uh, sixth year. Right. Because of COVID, got an extra year. So David's just one of those with that infectious smile. I don't think he's ever had a bad day. I mean, he's one of those. I see him after a loss, and they're taking pictures on the court, and I'll see things on Facebook and this and that and the other. So David is just that kind of guy that... Uh, like I said, never has a bad day, enjoys every moment of life, and he enjoyed that moment. Uh, as well he should, <laughs> and that's one that uh, I know I counted that replay, I think, seven times on our CBS national show <laughs> that morning after you guys got back in town. Um, what was, speaking of Coach Paris, what was it like your first few minutes with him when you're sitting down getting ready to do the postgame show after that win over Furman? What kind of air was he walking on? He had to have been... Super, super elated, like over the top. Yeah, it was it was pretty neat for my vantage point. Just to watch him embrace the players was pretty fun. I mean, and he will tell you he loves those guys. I mean, and he said that all year long in every interview he's done that I've seen that anyone's asked me. He goes, I love coaching these guys, and he has said that all year long. And I understand why. It's it's a it's a special group. Yeah, it's a good group. Not only are they talented, but the best thing is they like each other. As been pointed out a couple times this week, there's no clicks or anything like that. They truly like each other, get along with each other, want to see each other do the best, cheer for each other when they're not in the game, and you know everyone wants playing time. But even when they're not in, they root. You know they root for each other. So it's it's a special group. So. Talking to Coach Paris, uh, to see him, he's, he's, he doesn't have too many highs or too many lows. He's one of those that kind of plows straight ahead. Right. And uh, to see him kind of let loose a little bit, yeah. just emotionally hug those guys after the game, was a lot of fun for me. Is this as good a team as UTC has ever had? Well, I think they have to do the things that uh, the Sweet 16 team did or some of the other teams that, you know, they would be right up there. They're, they're good. They're really good. That Sweet 16 team was awfully good. Had a first-round draft pick in the NBA. And uh, 
some of those, when I say Willie White, Gerald Wilkins teams going all the way back to 83, 84, they were really, really good as well. Daryl Patterson sent this question in. He said, in your opinion, in your opinion, is this team as good as that of Johnny Taylor, Chris Mims, and Willie Young, Sweet 16 good? They could be, but I mean, you have to do it. You, I mean, you have to make those memories. They've made, they've made one, you know, but now how do you stack up against a top 25 team? I think Illinois, brand new Associated Press poll came out and Illinois is right 19th in the country. So how do you do against a top 25 team? So talent wise, obviously they have two or three guys that are really, really good. They're a deep team. Right. I mean, they play 10, sometimes 11 guys, which is kind of unheard of. Normally, teams play eight guys almost exclusively, maybe ninth if someone gets in foul trouble, but they play 10 on a regular basis. So I, I think that bodes well for them in tournament play. And you are going to be hopping on with the team, taking off to Pittsburgh, coming up probably sometime tomorrow. I'm guessing tomorrow. Mentally, do you get sight differently when you get this far up into the season than you do when you're first starting out or even midseason? Uh, the tournament's a different animal. The Southern Conference tournament is is a different deal. Tell me how. Well, normal, you know, I go through a game, and I th I think players and coaches are the same way. When I'm broadcasting a game, I'm I'm trying to get it right, and I'm trying to, you know, give you some trends on what's going on and why it's happening, or so and so's having a good day because he's physically superior to this guy, or they, you know, they had the double team this guy that leaves this guy open. So those are things you focus on, but. Again, sometimes during those timeouts or whatever, you're thinking, you know what? If they don't come back, and you know they trail by Furman, they trail to Furman two or three times, not only in overtime, but it, you go, you know what? This could be it. This could be it with this group. Right. So yeah, those things don't normally go through my mind, but they do in tournament play, where the finality of it all. That, yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to continue our conversation with Jim Reynolds, longtime voice of the UTC Mox, when we come back with more of Let's Chat. <laughs> 